Welcome back to Shadow Man Remastered. We're back here once again in the Cathedral of Pain because we're going to be visiting another one of the serial killers. Uh, so, I believe I said that we would be visiting Milton in Florida. And this would be his symbol, the cross spears. So, let's head in here and see what he's all about. We'll get his file out and start reading. Let's see if there's... Yeah, there's some, some dudes. Let's just get rid of the dudes first. There we go. He has an army theme to him, clearly. Let's read the file, see what he's all about. This is him. Serial Killer Report number three, Milton T. Pike. Aliases, Bobby McArdle, Bobby McNabb, Billy Joe Balboa, Franklin P. Tyndall, Rocky Mason, Shalimar Waters. Date of birth, July 4th, 1952, hair black, sex male, eyes brown, height 6'1", race white, weight 240 pounds, place of birth, Miami. Scars and marks, flaming skull tattoo with inscription, born to raise hell, on left side of chest. Scars on upper lip and chin. His background, he's a Vietnam veteran, 1971-73, Green Beret, Special Forces Electronic Countermeasures Expert, dishonorably discharged in 73 following alleged rape of female officer. Upon discharge, worked as a TV repairman from 1974 to 80. Indicted in the shooting of his mother, Francine Pike, in 1979, but was acquitted due to lack of evidence. Joined American Knights of the Cross, a survivalist militia group, in 1980. In 1981, formed his own breakaway splinter group, Knights of the American Heartland, Ka, with fortified compound near Eureka, Florida. The identifying symbol of the Ka is a remarkably similar to the cross spears symbol, see attachment 1C, found on stickers affixed to the videotapes sent by the Video Nasty Offender to various state police officials. Ka incorporated into National Militia Organization in 1982, with subsequent expulsion later that year, following Pike's murder of 18 of his own militiamen with a rocket-propelled grenade. Returned briefly to TV repair business, 1982 to 84, and during this time the FBI discovered that he had subscribed to every known electronics-based periodical and magazine. Became Forest Ranger in 1986 under assumed name Franklin P. Tyndall. Worked in, working in Cypress National Preserve in the Everglades with a specialty in alligator preservation. In 1991, was arrested following the murder of a hiker in the Cypress National Preserve. Escaped from custody, killing two sheriff's deputies in the process. Pike's whereabouts unknown from 1991 to 1995. From December 1995 to September 1996, Pike murdered nine women, disposing of their bodies in numerous locations. September uh, 2nd... This December 2nd, 1995, Barbie Mead, age 35, in Plymouth, Florida. December 19th, 1995, unidentified, age 37, Moore Haven, Florida. February 15th, 1996, Simone Phelps, age 35, St. Paul, South Carolina. May 17th, 1996, Nicola Patrick, age 36, Red Hill, Alabama. June 3rd, 1996, Gina Jason, age 33, Cherokee, Georgia. June 20th, 1996, Tony Tory Story, age 34, New London, Alabama. August 30th, 1996, Glenda Cook, age 40, Eloise, Florida. Uh, September 8th, 1996, Unidentified, age 32, Arcabudia, Mississippi. And September 29th, 1996, Billy Allison, age 38, in Sebastopol, Texas. Pike was known by the sobriquet Video Nasty Killer due to the fact that state police and all of the states mentioned above were the unfortunate recipients of videotape showing, in horrific detail, the hunting down and subsequent slaughter of at least six of the above victims. The following poem was found nearby each of the victims. And lo, if war should have a face, this one of five would show that bleeding mask, ears pricked to savor every scream, teeth bared to strip the carcass wet, and tongue to lap that vessel dry, for we are many. Pike was captured by FBI agents in October 1996. Following a series of anonymous tip-offs, the caller gave his code name as Legion. Three agents were killed and five wounded in the furious gun battle that followed. 
Pike, severely wounded himself, eventually passed out due to blood loss and was taken to the Dallas Memorial Hospital, where he remained in a critical condition for several days. Following his recovery, he was tried and convicted on 11 counts of first-degree murder. One of the FBI agents had subsequently died of his wounds, and is currently incar incarcerated at Gardell Penitentiary awaiting execution. As with the previously mentioned offender, offender and fellow death row inmate Marco Roberto Cruz, it's not known whether Pike is among the prisoners involved at the riot in Gardell. Attachment 1C. Photograph of Cross Spears symbol affixed to videotape sent to state, state police. And that's his file. Now, there is something strange about the file. It mentions that he's been arrested and is currently incarcerated at Gardell Penitentiary. And he does have a mug shot here. Now, the thing is, in the original game, I mentioned that three of the killers were all in the same level. And that level is the Gardell Penitentiary. Uh, but two of those killers, Milton being one of them, now have their own level. So the file stating that Milton is currently incarcerated at Gardell doesn't actually make sense anymore because he's not. Uh, because he he's now in Florida, in his own level. It does mention that uh, the the uh, person who gave a tip-off to the FBI gave a code name as Legion, implying, I guess, that Legion snitched on Milton for the purpose of getting him into position, I guess. Getting Milton to where, he needed, there, where Legion needed him to be, I suppose. But, uh, like I said, instead of at, being at Gardell... He is now going to be at the summer camp in Florida. I would assume that the reason that uh, two of the killers have their own levels was maybe that was originally intended for the game. And then maybe uh, that had maybe plans had to be changed. But originally, Milton was one of the two uh, killers whom their torso here was already open at the beginning of the game. So you didn't actually need a retractor to reach him. His torso was already opened. You could just go in there, fight him, and then, of course, you'd lose because you weren't Shadow Man and Live Side. You were Mike. And that would demonstrate to you that, oh, you can't actually kill the five unless you have your shadow powers. So the progression here in the remaster is a bit different. So we're at the summer, summer camp in Florida. Of course, only one Dark Soul. And you know where that is. It's in Milton. So we're going to have to go find him. And uh, that would be the eclipse causing the shadow to fall on the world of men. Looks like that the police were investigating this site, but we will not find any cops here, or at least not living cops. All right, let's head inside Camp Ocala. Very fancy entrance here with the alligator mouth and everything. This door has a padlock on the other side of it. So if we could open that up, that would be a, a shortcut back to the entrance. Oh, here's a dog. I mentioned in the London level that the dogs are now showing their true demonic forms. Hey, kids, let's have a really wild time. I like the mascot they have here at Camp Ocala. It's nice. That one's also locked in here.
no receptionist to greet us. Padlocked. Maybe I should just shoot the thing off. Yeah, that's well, this window is open. We can't jump through it, but if we aim carefully. Yes. There we go. I guess the music, well, music, ambient sound we're hearing here, I guess uh, memories, flashbacks maybe, of Milton's time in Vietnam. No, no, it's not. Mike's reaction to that is pretty, uh, pretty neutral. But then again, I mean, I guess just seeing a few body parts on a bed is not that much in comparison to the things he has seen elsewhere. The summer camp is a pretty big level, actually. It has that in common with the other new levels for the remaster. When they made these new levels, they really wanted to put as much level as they could in them. Oh, just ran into this crocodile. Have we encountered a crocodile yet? I don't think we would have. There are some in the bayou, but we would not have seen them on our first time there. They can be pretty dangerous. They can do a lot of damage to you in a short period of time if they start biting. Just having a look around for any Kado, spare Kado that may be here and there. I mean, sometimes they don't really attack right away. Oh, yeah, that, that he's coming. He's coming. He's, he's trying to get here. I don't think he comes in here, though. He does not. He does not like the inside. There must be something down here. There must be. Well, we know Milton's around here somewhere. Though he has not shown himself right away. Sometimes the killers might show themselves right away, like Avery did not waste much time before introducing himself. Jack took a while, though, before he actually wanted to talk to Mike. Shit. There's Milton. He's in the distance. He set up a, a sentry gun. You can see him running around next to it. He's got a machine gun of his own. Yeah, Milton's not even bothering to introduce... Okay, he vanished. He's gone. Not even bothering to introduce himself. Like, he set up that gun. He set up some bear traps. See? He knew, he knew Mike was coming. He wasn't going to uh, mess around, I guess. <laughs> I don't think we can actually take down the sentry gun. Sweet Jesus. More bloody uh, body parts. Also, a videotape with the video nasty symbol on it. This should be useful. And now we finally have gotten the live side weapon. It's the first time we've gotten one. So machine gun. It, ha it uses ammo. But now that we've gotten it, we will start to find ammo in um, in boxes in live side. Oh, 
Of course, since we're Shadow Man, we still do have access to our voodoo weapons here. But it's always nice to have more options. Writing on the walls. And lo, if war should have a face. Well, we've read this poem in Deacon's File. A blood stain and a trail being dragged away. This one of five would show that bleeding mask. Can't, can't cross the police tape. Look, Mike respects the boundary, right? He respects the law. He's not going to go through that tape. Going to have to find another way around. Ears pricked to savor every scream. There's some items there. Has this police tape, but of course we can't we can't go through there. It's not po it's not possible. Mike is Lord of Dead Side, but he will respect the tape. God help us all. Teeth bare to strip the carcass wet. Yep. Remote control. Maybe I could use this. All right, that opened up some doors. Don't know if this is the if these are the murders that the cops were investigating here, or is this one of the cops themselves? Because there are cars around, but uh, no living people. Still can't reach that stuff in there. Get up into this giant vent. Very spacious. Like, you can just stand up straight in this vent. No need to crawl or anything. <laughs> Two ways to go up there. Let's go this way. There must be something around here. Must be. And here we can drop down into that space that was cordoned off by the tape. Great. Great indeed. Found some some cadeau. We also found some uh, shotgun shells. Hmm. That's interesting. The handprint? Maybe. I don't know if it's that interesting. We found some shotgun shells. We've not actually gotten the shotgun. <laughs> that would be in another level. I always thought it was curious about all the live side weapons you could get, considering how little time you spend here. And as Shadow Man, we have access to our voodoo weapons anyway. And you can't use the live side weapons in Dead Side. Ahem. And tongue, tongue to lap that vessel dry. Unbelievable. Well, the poem is completed, and we found where this path of blood leads to this straw hat and that body up there. Let's head up to the projector room. And of course, the final line of the poem. For we are many. I guess it's like a picture, I guess, of, of another wrapped up body in between a couple of canoes, I guess, is what we're seeing there. A 
but even though we, we found that body, Milton has not been showing himself since that one time. Some gators down there. Well, we can carefully jump. And also, they're kind of slow. So it's not that big of a problem unless you have a bunch of them around you. Something around here. And we made it to the teddy bear point. So we can warp back here if we needed to. But we shouldn't need to. This is also the point where if you were playing as regular Mike, you have to stop. Because you would not be able to advance. Let's take a look at to as to why. There must be another way in. Yeah, this is blocked off. And there is another way in. Down here. Oh, hold on. Got, got gators. Yeah, they're following. Yeah, you see this, uh... This down here? This hole? Well, that would be where we have to go. And of course, if you're playing his regular mic, well, you we've seen his problems with holding his breath. He cannot do it. Yep, did a bunch of damage to me real quick. Hold on, let's uh let's double hand some weapons here. be going down this hole, but there's some other stuff down here that I do want to find. Just like some cadeau here and there. You know how they do. In wide out areas like this, you'll just see some cadeau lying around. Just as a reason to explore. And look around the space. ammo on my gun. But I still do have my voodoo. And there's a Godot over there. And here's a second one. Think that might be all there is down here. All right. Let's uh, swim down and see where that takes us.
Another Cadeau in this little boat right here. There we go. Great. Now we're entering the next area of the level, of the camp. We're heading underground into a cave. And this cave is pretty mazy. Pretty mazy. It'll be difficult to find your way around in here. And especially since this is a new level. It can be, uh... It's not something I've memorized. I don't believe we can jump over this. Oh, shit. Thank the Lord. Yep, it was a long fall, but we did fall into water, so it was a soft landing. Or, you know, soft enough for the Lord of Dead Side. So underneath the camp is this just big cave system, apparently. And Milton has made his home, his lair, somewhere in the system. This door has a lock on the other side. So if we get to the other side, we can open that and create a shortcut. If it was needed. See if we can make that jump over there. There we go. run into sort of like a, a stone structure in the underneath the, the camp in these caves. I mean, that was clear like carved stone instead of the rough stone that we're seeing here. Well, we could go down. Is there anything else we want to see before we drop down there? No, this is blocked off here. Right, let's see if we can grab, like, that entry before uh, we fall all the way down. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay, nothing in here, I guess. Oh, but there is another entry down there. So we dropped from there, got into this little nook, and now we can see that there's something there. I wonder what's around here. What could there be? Well, there's another hole. find another of these carved rooms. Well, there are holes in the floor that lead down into another chamber. And the reason that we're here... Something around here. Yeah, there is something around here. It's this. The reason we're here is to push this block. That drops it down into the lower chamber. Let's follow it. Missed. But that's fine. We can get up there. Now, if we approach this chamber from another direction, that block we just pushed down would not be there, and we would not be able to make this jump here. And the reason that we wanted to make that jump is to get this. This should be useful. 
And now we have our third accumulator. So we've used two already in the playrooms. We need a third to open up that case with the violator in it. And here's our third. So if we had just dropped down that shaft without seeing that there was another way we could go, we would not have been able to push that block and get that accumulator. All right, four ways to go. I think the regular entrance you would have come in through, come in here is through, through, through this. This is usually the way that you would have, you would have come from this direction. If you had dropped down that shaft all the way to the bottom, you would come out here. The accumulator was there. Let's head in this direction. You can see it's a pretty large, twisty area. First time I did this, I was wandering around for a while, trying to figure out where to go. This takes us out into a larger cave area. Actually, I think down there is where we were before. We fell down from the top. I think this is the same room. Let's try not to fall down there again. Now, actually, how could it be the same room? Because when we fell in the water the first time, we then, after that, fell down a larger shaft. So this has to be another room, I think. But if we fell down there, we would just have to work our way back up here. So let's try to avoid that. And here's this padlocked door we found before. All right, and that takes us to the other side. I believe if we fell down into that water, we couldn't just jump back up here. We would have to work our way back around. So let's avoid that and go in here. we have found Milton's lair. Let's, um, let's equip some weapons and, uh, say hello to the man. Hey, you, this is private property. What the hell you think you're doing, boy? I ain't your boy. <laughs> Don't you get uppity with me. You trespassing on my property. I can call you anything I choose, boy. I didn't see no signs, fatso. That's cause you didn't arrive by the front door, did you? I don't need an invitation, fat man. I've been sent here by a higher power. I'm the only power around these parts, boy. You gonna find that out soon enough. You gonna find out what survival is all about. Just like a rerun of the NAM. It's judgment day for you and all your kind. This is the end, beautiful friend, for we are many. Jesus, I don't need this bullshit. Yes, Mike is not impressed. Well, Milton is firing his big old machine gun from over there. Got like a few islands connected with the bridges. And he can do a lot of damage all at once with that gun. Yeah. Our gun's out. Let's see. Um, let's see how the Marteau does. Yeah, all of them are homing in. Whoop. See if we can find some health. Oh, 
know, he's low on health. He's low on health because he has his, uh, we can see his true form. So, oof. so are we. I'd rather not die. Because if we die, we would begin back at the teddy bear point at the lake. Remember how far away that was? Consider that a dishonorable discharge, boy. This should be useful. All right, that's it for Milton. Dark souls are mine. And we've got his dark soul. All right. That's the third of the five down. He's a little harder than the rest, I think, just because of how much damage his gun can do. Like, you, even though we have a lot of health uh, due to those uh, Kado upgrades, it really shaved our health down real fast if we got close to him. Another option would, could have been to try using the shield. Like, this drains your voodoo, though, but that could be an option to block his shots. Also, he's got a little helicopter. This cute little helicopter. The helicopter is so tiny. It's a small, hel small helicopter. I don't think you can blow it up. You can fight a helicopter in the prison and you can blow that up. I don't think this can be blown up. Also, please enjoy Milton's death theme, which is quite clearly meant to be the end. And there is a passage leading away from Milton's chamber. And this will be a shortcut for us to get to where we need to go. anything here. No, that's just shallow water. Not water we can dive down into. And there is some, uh, some coals blocking the way if we had not gotten that upgrade already. But no problem. And we take a slide down back to this carved stone area. this out of the way. Is this something? No, that's that's shallow as well. Move that out of the way, and let's see. Right, we want to go this way. This will take us to... Yeah, we drop down here. And this will take us to... The Soul Gate. Here it is. So... As you've seen, this is a really large level. It is a really large and twisting area, and it's difficult to find your way around. But we did it. We got through the camp. Gonna slam this prism down. We're gonna head on inside. It's a very big area, but there are no enemies or anything, really. Like, there are a few dogs. But not that, it's not much. There is that one bit where Milton does um, assault, it gets like a surprise attack on you with the sentry gun. I thought that was neat, but I felt like this level needed more of that. Like if there was more things like traps you would be running into that Milton set up and such, that could, could have been neat, but it really only happened the one time. Um, overall, a very large, a twisting level that seems too big, but not a whole lot in it. Uh, and it does get, like I said, pretty difficult your first time through to actually find Milton and then find your way back to the Soul Gate. Uh, and then also being able to find the Accumulator, because you have to, when you drop down that shaft, you have to find that there is like a, a passage above 
there's you have to drop down to like a nook and then notice you'll be able to see another passage and then drop down to that without dropping down the shaft fully so you can find the room with the block and push the block down so you can drop down on that and then get the accumulate it's like a, it's it's a very very big very puzzly level very mazy level but that's the summer camp one of the new levels of the remaster and of course this will take us back to the engine block there's lava around this we do not have protection against lava so we do need be do need to be careful about that let's not fall in the lava and as with the other members of the five this takes us to a part of the engine block that we have not been to before let's get out our torch Whoop. there we go So that key pulled out half of a bridge over here. These gauges are going nuts. We've seen that a bunch of times. Don't know what those gauges are measuring. A lot of fluctuations happening. There's the rest of that bridge. All right, we do have to jump back. And now we can cross the bridge. And down there, we can see a cage. We know what's in that cage. little uh little science rooms we've seen these here and there in the experimentation rooms and the playrooms where they conduct their you know their evil science uh. <laughs> 
souls are mine. I believe that's everything in this room. We're in that big hallway, that hallway of infinite cages that we saw uh, we saw briefly before. Looks like we're in the middle of it now. Now we've made it to the control room. This is control room number three. So let's take a look at the journal. Control room number three, the code is 431. Let's put on our glove. And that's four. And this is already three. Let's get this one to one. And that stops the piston. All right, that's our fourth piston down. Only two more to go in that dark engine. And well, we know where they are. They're behind the final two serial killers. Got to get them, get their prisms, open up their soul gates and get to their pistons. And then finally, Mikey can cross through the engine block and reach poor Luke, who's in so much trouble. But one problem is that, whoop, one problem is that we are out of, um, out of retractors. We found three of them so far in the asylum, but there are two more somewhere that we have yet to find. We don't have them now, though. So that means we can't actually do the remaining two serial killers yet. We will have to keep continuing on exploring the asylum to find those retractors, then get back to those two. As for the level that we just did, uh, like I said, it's a new level uh, made, I would suppose, probably from, I would assume the intention of uh, what was originally supposed to be in the game, that uh, maybe there was originally supposed to be a summer camp level, I don't know, but there is one now. Very big, a lot of space, uh, takes a while to get through it, a very mazy, confusing level. Um, I feel like, like I said, I just feel like it needed more in it. A lot of space, but not that much in it. I just feel like there needed to be more, I think. Uh, as it is, it kind of takes too long to actually get to Milton, uh, especially when you're trying to navigate through the, the cave maze in the second part of the level. Um, but that is done, and I do feel that Milton's boss fight is certainly tougher than Avery's and Jack's as Milton can really deliver a ton of damage to you in a short period of time. And if you don't take cover, you will die, and that will take you back to the teddy bear point at the lake, and then you would have to go through that whole cave maze again to get back to him. That can be a bit frustrating. But that's done. Milton's done. Three killers done. Uh, but as for what we're going to do now, well, 
in previous parts, we got the uh, ability to walk on coals. We got the marteau, which lets us bang drums and open those doors. And we got the ability to be Shadow Man in Live Side. And all, all of these things put together means that we can backtrack to some areas that we've been in uh, and get some Dark Souls and some stuff that we were not able to get before. Actually, we can backtrack to a lot of places, especially because of those that the coal walking. We've seen many coals in many levels that we were not able to cross, but now we can cross them. So uh, next time on Shadow Man Remastered, we're going to be doing some big, big backtracking as we go back to a whole bunch of areas we've been to to get those tasty Dark Souls that we had to leave behind our first time through. We're currently at 65 Dark Souls out of 120. Let's see how many we can get when we do our big backtracking next time on Shadow Man Remastered.